Well, we've got a massive scandal on our hands. Truly, there is a big scandal behind the baby formula shortage, and politicians do not want you to know about it. So let's dig in. I'm Liz Wheeler. Welcome to The Liz Wheeler Show. Okay, so let's start today by watching this video of Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. He is essentially deflecting responsibility away from the Biden administration for this crisis, this shortage of baby formula. Moms and dads can't find the formula that they need, especially for their, especially for babies that have allergies, specialized formula, if you will. And he's, Buttigieg is painting this like it is a problem with the market. And let me just tell you, it is not. Well, and, and this is going to be an issue Congress takes up this week. I know the president said more actions coming, but this has been ongoing for months. There were supply chain issues already. Then you have the issue with this one plant, yeah. Abbott, um, whistleblower in September, February, the recall. It's May. Why has it taken so long? And why did the president on Friday seem to say that it was new information to him? He said, if we'd been better mind readers, I guess we could have done something earlier. Well, look, the administration acted from day one after the recall, taking steps like creating more flexibility for the WIC program to help rebalance the availability of formula in the states. There are more actions that are underway, including looking at imports. But fundamentally, we are here because a company was not able to guarantee that its plant was safe, and that plant has shut down. But that is the federal government's job as regulators to help ensure as regulators, yes, plant. but let's be very clear. This is a capitalist country. The government does not make baby formula, nor should it. Mm -hmm. Companies make formula. And one of those companies, a company which, by the way, seems to have 40% market share, messed up and is unable to confirm that a plant, a major plant, is safe and free of contamination. So the most important thing to do right now of course, is to get that plant in Michigan up and running safely. Mm -hmm. And that's the work that's going on between the company and the FDA. It's got to be safe and it's got to be up and running as soon as possible. But this is the difference between a supply chain problem, in other words, a, a problem about moving right. goods around, and a supply problem, which has to do with whether they're being produced in the first place. Now, the administration's also been working with other companies to try to surge their production. That's led to an increase in production, which is helping to compensate. But at the end of the day, this plant needs to come back online safely. Government doesn't make formula, he says. This is all about capitalism. This is the market. He's blaming the recall of uh, at the plant, the Michigan plant uh, of Abbott Nutrition, supply, not supply chain, he said. Let me just tell you, he is wrong and he is a liar. Here's why. Now, I like GenuCell because it works. How old does your mirror say you are when you look in the mirror? Ladies and gentlemen, you can delay this question for 5, 10, even 15 years with the new Ultra Retinol Serum from GenuCell. Marina from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, loved it so much. Let me read you what she says. She says, great product. My skin loves it. I've spent more money on creams over the years, enough to pay off my house. Just kidding, she says. But it feels like that. This product has changed my life like no other. Now, Marina is obviously flying high with GenuCell's new Ultra Retinol Serum with Hyaluronic Acid. This technological wonder hydrates your skin at a cellular level and builds on this deep moisture with the incredible anti-wrinkle effects of phytoretinol. You can go to GenuCell.com slash Liz right now for up to 50% off the brand new Ultra Retinol Serum. You'll be amazed with the results or your money back guarantee. You'll also get GenuCell immediate effects for results in 12 hours or less. And this comes free with your order. If you go to GenuCell.com slash Liz, go to GenuCell.com slash Liz. Free express shipping, free returns, exquisite customer service. Go to GenuCell.com slash Liz. Okay, so we dug into this crisis, uh, this, this, this shortage baby formula, a little bit last week because... Um, the left and the mainstream media were blaming this on blaming the shortage purely, only, solely on the recall uh, uh, at the Abbott at the Abbott Nutrition plant in Sturgis, Michigan. And last week I said that's not true. That's that's it's. I actually I think I said that is partially true, which means it's also partially false. Um, I, I said last week it's because of the supply chain. What happened during COVID is we it, it exposed our reliance on China. We relied too much on importing things from China, and so when something like COVID happens to stop importation of goods to us from China. Um, well, we have shortages. So part of it's a supply chain issue. Part of it is a labor shortage, thanks to the Democrats at the federal level and in blue states 
paying people to not work, giving them unemployment benefits that actually are worth more than the paycheck that they would have earned, that obviously disincentivizes work, incentivizes people not to work, causes a labor shortage, no employees, nobody to do the work. Then we had a whistleblower at the Abbott plant in October notify the FDA about unsafe, unsanitary conditions. And the FDA basically ignored this whistleblower, even though the whistleblower gave them extensive, extensive proof of the claim that they were making. We'll talk about that more a little bit later in the show. So hang tight on that thought. In January, we had conservative organizations like the Federalist warning, hey, this is this is coming. A, a shortage of baby formula is about to hit the United States. In February, we, we get to this voluntary recall of uh, by Abbott Nutrition because of some bacteria from their formula that was making babies sick. They since deny that it is, but whatever. Um, but the, the question that's interesting regarding the recall that shows us that maybe something more is at play here. Maybe there's a scandal below the surface. Um, maybe it's a, a Titanic hitting the iceberg situation. Is this question, and th this is what really made me think, because I thought, well, there are recalls of foods frequently. There are recalls of drugs, actually, even more frequently than of foods. But do recalls of drugs or foods, do they, do they usually cause shortages of that food? And the answer to that is no. They don't usually cause shortages, especially for drugs. And a baby formula is manufactured almost more like a pharmaceutical than it is like a food. And it doesn't usually cause shortages. So we covered all of that last week. But zoom out here, bigger picture. We, we find that we actually do have a titanic situation here. We have a, a situation where what we're seeing on the surface, what the mainstream media is telling us, what the Biden administration is telling us is just the tip of the iceberg under the surface there's a much bigger scandal brewing. So what did Secretary Pete say? Let's parse his words. He said, government doesn't make baby formula and nor should they, he said. No, they don't. That's correct. He's being accurate. But they allow, government allows some people to make it and doesn't allow other people to make it. The government also chooses some people to have it, maybe the illegals at the border, and chooses other people not to have it based on the fact that there's a shortage and it's going to the border. They also choose certain people to have baby formula for free. And other people have to pick up the cost for that. Other people buying formula for their babies. Again, we'll get to more of that later in the show as well. The point of all of this is it almost doesn't matter that the FDA and Abbott Nutrition have reached this deal. It's, it's a mutually agreed on deal that will open the plant in Michigan back up in about two weeks, which means in about eight weeks, there will be formula on the shelves again. It almost doesn't matter that this happened because unless we fix the underlying cause of why this happened, unless we recognize the scandal and unless there's serious accountability at the highest level of our government for the confluence of events that led to this, it will happen again. So there are five major reasons that this shortage of baby formula happened and behind each of these five reasons is corruption. It's scandal, political scandal. And of course, where political scandal exists, the politicians engaging that political scandal don't want you to know about it. So let's start with the regulatory aspect here. The FDA regulates the production, the distribution, and the sale of baby formula here in the United States. And when I say they tightly regulate it, this is one of the, one of the most tightly regulated industries in our entire country. It's not regulated exactly like food. Uh, if you're a producer of food, you you can you can break into the market fairly easily. Not so with the baby formula industry. It's it's very tightly regulated to the point where in the United States, almost exclusively formula that is sold has been manufactured here in the United States. We don't allow very many imports of European formula, for example. It's illegal to sell formula created, manufactured, and produced and sold in Europe. It's it's illegal to sell that here in the United States. Why? Not because that formula is bad, not because it's dangerous, not because it's unsafe, not because it's unsanitary. It's simply illegal to sell it here due to FDA labeling requirements, meaning sometimes the label is in a different language from you know, a European country and not in English. And because of that, the FDA doesn't allow it to be even sold. The, the, the moms in our country, a lot of moms, by the way, buy European formula. A lot of moms listening to this are shaking their head saying, I know, I do this. And it's through a third party vendor. It's, it's a way of sneaking European formula into the country. I have friends who do this um, because European formula has ingredients that are healthier and better than than the ingredients in U.S. formula, even though the FDA claims that it's not safe to import European formula because there might be there might be sanitary or ingredient issues. Nutritionally, by the way, European formula is typically better. There's there's not corn syrup in it. 
like there is in, in U.S. formula. It's, there's not the vegetable, the other vegetable oils, and there's more lactose in European formula, which mimics breast milk more than U.S. formula does. So it's not only nutri- nutritionally fine compared to U.S., it's actually better. So the, the formula that is imported into the United States, the very little bit of it that is allowed to be imported into the United States, faces it's restricted because it faces a very heavy tax. It faces a 17% import tax. Like, that's enormous. For any kind of good or service coming to our country, 17% import tax is, is enormous. And by the way, this is, this is not just the Biden administration. Knowingly or unknowingly, even the Trump administration made it difficult for, um, to import baby formula from Canada. So this, this regulatory role that the FDA plays in, in the production, the manufacturing, and the sale, and the distribution of baby formula, this regulatory role is the lens through which we have to look at this entire industry. So the industry itself is not, as Pete Buttigieg suggests, a free market system. It is essentially a monopoly. It's a monopoly because three big companies, four if you want to count, um, if you want to count a, a manufacturing company that that is a contract company, they they produce the formula if they get orders from other places. But three three formula companies, Abbott, Mead Johnson, and Gerber, Gerber is the brand of Nestle, they own most of the market. They own about 90% of the market if you include um uh, if you include Perigo, which is the which is the contract producer of um, of baby formula, and these four companies own the lion's share of the baby formula market, and it's not it's not it's not a situation where an entrepreneur or a business owner can say, okay, well, I want to compete with some with with big bottle, some people call it, with with these big these big companies, these big formula companies. You can't easily do that, and it's it's almost impossible because. The FDA's regulatory structure has made the barrier to entry extremely difficult. Um, And they haven't just made the barrier to entry extremely difficult. They've also made it easy to stay once you've achieved that hurdle. Once you've you've met the original standards that the FDA has set, then you're good. And I don't mean that in the positive way. I mean, then they don't apply the regulations that they should, that the FDA should, to um, the existing the existing players in the in this formula market. So let's talk about barrier to entry first. So for example, um, there's a there's a formula called Bobby here in the United States. It's it's an American company that makes what's called a European style formula. So maybe organic, maybe grass fed, maybe based on goat's milk, maybe not having high fructose corn syrup in it, um, maybe trying to mimic breast milk a little bit more. It, it's more similar to the European style formulas that a lot of moms, especially with preemies or with babies with allergies, prefer. And um, they were the first baby formula firm to enter this market in the space of five years. Think about that for a second. Across the entire United States, nobody competed in the baby formula market. Nobody, nobody entered this competition, threw their hat in the ring, started producing something new or innovative or different for five years. That's pretty odd if you're talking about a country of over 300 million people with how many businesses and a GDP of how much. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. And the reason for this is because you you have to invest just millions and millions of dollars of capital um, into clearing the hurdles set by the FDA. Congress is also to blame by this to blame for this, by the way, because they set standards in the Infant Formula Act of 1980 that well, are extremely difficult to to clear. Um, We're talking about nutritional requirements. We're talking about all kinds of tests that need to be run. Um, It's very difficult to break into the market. And, And if you're like Bobby... Bobby, by the way, is the formula company. This is ironic that we're talking about them uh, the next week because Bobby's the formula company. This is, this is tangential, by the way. Bobby's the formula company that I mentioned last week when I was talking about Roe v. Wade and how a, a baby formula company was actually supporting abortion. They were decrying the Supreme Court uh, opinion, the leak of the opinion that showed the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. And I said, well, that's odd because they the customer of this formula company is infants, and yet they're also advocating that you should be legally allowed to kill your baby odd. Um, it's the same company. Coincidental. Um, okay. So Bobby though is a contract firm, meaning that they, they contract a manufacturer to produce their product. And there is just one contract manufacturer of baby formula in the entire United States. It's, it's Perigo Nutritionals, who I mentioned a moment ago. And it's not like you can just be a boutique and put in an, an order for a small amount, um, with, with this manufacturer. No, they actually require an initially a very large initial order in order to even do business with them. So 
Um, there's one option if you want to be a contract, a contract producer of baby formula and you have to have a, uh, an initially large uh, order to put in with Perigo Nutritional. So, I mean, talk about a high barrier of entry, not only the FDA regulations, but also you just don't have options if you don't have your own manufacturing, um, if you don't have your own manufacturing facility. And there's been only one, by the way, there's been only one company that has built their own manufacturing facility of baby formula, a new one in the last 15 years. One new company has actually built their own manufacturing facility. So as you can see, it's nearly impossible to break into this industry. Um, very hard to enter, but very easy to stay. Easy to stay thanks to the FDA and easy to say not in the good way. Now, I like Cozy Earth Sheets because they address a problem many of us have. So let me ask you a question. How did you sleep last night? Now, if you answered this question, not so great or just okay, or please don't ask, then you are not alone, my friend. One out of three Americans report being sleep deprived and your sheets could be part of the problem. That's why I like cozy earth sheets. The wrong sheets can trap body heat, leaving you boiling one minute and freezing the next. The solution, cozy earth sheets. They are the softest, most luxurious and best temperature regulating sheets on the planet. It's like sleeping on a cloud, which actually makes sense because they're made from bamboo, which allows cozy earth sheets to breathe so that you sleep at the perfect temperature all year round. Cozy Earth even offers a 100 night sleep trial, which means you have up to 100 nights to sleep on it, wash it, try it out. If you are not completely in love, just send it back for a full refund. You can now save 35% on Cozy Earth Bamboo bedding, 35%, what a deal. Just go to CozyEarth.com slash Liz35. You have to hurry because this offer ends soon. It's CozyEarth.com slash L-I-Z-3-5. CozyEarth.com slash Liz35. So the baby formula industry, very hard to enter thanks to the FDA regulations, thanks to the monopoly. And it's very easy to stay thanks to the FDA, but not easy to stay in the good way because the FDA isn't really ensuring that baby formula is good, is healthy, and is safe for our little ones. In fact, according to an organization called Healthy Babies Bright Futures, um, there are a lot of heavy metals, dangerous, neurotoxic heavy metals found in baby formula across the United States. They actually tested 13 different formulas here in the United States, and every single one of them, this is a quote, had detectable levels of arsenic, cadmium, lead, and or mercury. Arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. Now, this is obviously, I mean, these are neurotoxins. These can, these can damage your child's brain. These can cause developmental and neurological problems for life. IQ reductions. I mean, this is serious, serious stuff. So we have the regulatory aspect. We're looking at this through the regulatory aspect of the FDA. Then it's not a free market system. It's not capitalism here. It's crony capitalism at best. Um, and it's, it's, it's really a monopoly. A monopoly. It's very, the barrier to entry is very high. And yet the FDA makes it very easy to stay for those who have already uh, been part, who are active participants in this monopoly. Then we get to this, this, this aspect that the government plays. So put the FDA aside for a second, enter the U.S. Department of Ag Agriculture. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has a program called WIC. We've all probably heard of this. It's the Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children. And WIC is responsible for half of the for baby formula purchases in the United States. Half. Half of the baby formula pur purchases go through WIC. And the, the way that this happens um, by the way, when 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 WIC purchases this formula, it then becomes free to the women who qualify for this for this program. That's really important for a reason I'll get to in just a second. But what happens is the government holds an auction essentially to um, to contract with one of these companies um, who are going to be the provider of the formula for the WIC program. The problem is they only contract one one provider of baby formula per state. So it's not like it's not like they can be, oh, you know, A, B, and C all qualify for WIC and you have an option of what you can buy your baby if you qualify for this program. No. In in every state, there's only one baby formula that qualifies for WIC. And remember, 50% of baby formula sales in the United States are through WIC. So this this is a, I mean, this is beyond a monopoly. This is this is a really, a really big deal. And remember that name, Abbott Nutrition, the plant in Sturgis, Michigan that shut down. Um, Abbott Nutrition is the monopoly provider of baby formula in 34 states in our country. 34 states and Washington, D.C., fun fact. Um, th this, this skews the market in a way that, I mean, 
absolutely makes what Secretary Pete Buttigieg, uh, what he said about it being capitalism and the free market makes it laughable because what the providers of what the what these manufacturers, these these companies, these baby formula companies do is they compensate. So when they when they sell their formula to the government, they usually sell it at a bulk discount. And when it's sold at a bulk discount, well, they need to make up that money somewhere else. So what do they do? They raise the price of their formula on um, the women who are actually paying for their formula when they walk into the store. In fact, they they raise their prices by an average of 26 to 35%. So remember a couple of minutes ago when I said, oh, this is, this is redistribution of wealth in a sense. Um, it's not really free formula. Somebody else is paying for it. Well, two moms walk into a store, one qualifies for WIC and one doesn't. Not only does the mom who qualifies for WIC get the formula for free, the mom who doesn't qualify for WIC is paying, not only paying for her own formula, she's paying the difference to pay for the mom who qualified for WIC. That's why, that's one of the big reasons why formula in the United States, baby formula is so expensive because it's artificially priced. And it, it's skewed even more than that because um, if, if half of your sales have to be one brand, half your sales in a store have to be one brand because half your sales are WIC and WIC only contracts with one brand per state, then it doesn't make a lot of business sense to have a ton of other options on the shelf. It really makes most sense to have that same brand as your primary, as your primary option that you're offering because then, um, then the women who qualify for WIC you know, can, can choose the different sub brands. And so it skews it even further because in the states that are contracted with WIC, most, most of the sales are of the WIC chosen contracted um, manufacturer of baby formula. So as you can see, it's a, it's a complete mess. There was a report done by an economist at Notre Dame. His name is David Betson. Um, he compiled this report in 2009, and this is what he writes. He said, the WIC program accounts for 91% of the increase in the growth of real formula prices between 1981 and 2002. Capitalism, Secretary Pete? Are you kidding? Free market? Are you kidding? This is this is monopoly. This is a regulatory nightmare. This is a monopoly, not a free market. And then this is another government program that's skewing. It, well, it's really exploiting. It's taking advantage of the existing monopoly. So then let's talk about the FDA. And the FDA is responsible not only for regulating, but for ensuring the safety of this industry. And you might notice that I'm laughing here because my reaction is safety. Ha, ha. So Circling back to the European formulas for a second, the FDA tells us that European formulas don't or aren't FDA labeled. So because they're not FDA labeled, they're not safe. They pose potential risks for babies. They 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 are they're dangerous. Um, yeah, because their labels are in a different language. FDA. Okay, but let's look here for a second at at what the FDA has done here in the United States to ensure the safety of the baby formula industry. Essentially, they. Once someone has broken, once a manufacturer, a business has broken into the baby formula industry, they conduct very poor routine inspections that miss unsafe conditions in the plants. And I'm not, I'm not saying this hypothetically, I'm not saying this vaguely. At the Sturgis plant in Michigan, the Abbott Nutrition plant, um, it had been two years since the FDA inspected the plant. They're required to do so at least on an annual basis, but it had been two years since they had inspected the plant at all. This is according to a Politico report. I want to read this to you. Politico says the September inspection report cited the Sturgis plant for not being in clean and sanitary condition. There was standing water in a few places in the facility. One employee was observed not washing hands or changing gloves after touching non-food contact surfaces, but there were no major red flags and the inspection got classified as what's known as a VAI or voluntary action indicated, which means Abbott Nutrition could voluntarily address the issues according to inspection logs. The September inspection report did not say anything about dryer deterioration. When FDA inspectors went back late in January, however, obser officials observed that the plant had a history of internal deterioration for dryers dating back to 2018, citing the plant's own records. The agency noted that the company's records showed that in August 2021, dryer inspections found six instances of cracks and pits in the main chamber for one dryer, and several other cracks and damages were observed. Further specifics were redacted. The inspection documents didn't comment on the current conditions of the dryers in question. So 
let me interrupt myself for one second. So the dryer issue, the dryer deterioration issue in these plants is really critical because most baby formula comes in powdered form, meaning it has to be dried out. But the bacteria that can sometimes contaminate baby formula happens if these dryers have deterioration. If there's a place for the bacteria to live, a place for the bacteria to grow, a place for the bacteria to get into the dried powdered formula product. So dryer deterioration is a really big deal in the baby formula manufacturing industry. A, not a, a huge deal, a critical safety issue. And the FDA didn't find this, overlooked this, didn't do their due diligence. Politico goes on, the FDA's most recent inspection, which spanned from late January to mid-March, observed many other problems that were absent from the agency's routine inspection just four months earlier. There were many more examples of water problems. Officials noted there had been more than 300 water events, such as leaks, condensation, and standing water in the production area in the past year, per the company's own records. They also observed that plant workers had improper protective apparel, among other issues. Perhaps most crucially, the agency found records suggesting that the plant had destroyed some formula product after it had tested positive for Chronobacter on two separate occasions in September 2019 and June 2020. The report also noted that the company had found the bacteria inside the plant a number of other times. FDA inspectors themselves found five different strains of Chronobacter in several locations of the plant when they returned in early 2022. So you might be thinking, okay, well, it sounds like the FDA found all of, all of these things. Well, wait a second. The FDA was notified in October of last year by probably a, a, an employee at this plant. It was a whistleblower, so their, their privacy is protected, by a whistleblower who sent dozens and dozens of pages of evidence and proof to substantiate the allegations, sent that to the FDA in October. This is really critical information that could impact the safety of babies across our country. What did the FDA do? Nothing in October. Nothing in November. It wasn't until December that they interviewed the whistleblower. They interviewed the whistleblower in December, and then it wasn't until January 31st that they actually sent an inspector to Sturgis again. So received the report in October, nothing in October, nothing in November, interviewed the whistleblower in December. The very last day of January, they sent an inspector, and it was only during that inspection when they realized, oh bleep, something's going on here, that they actually did our thorough inspection. So this same FDA, the same FDA that tells us that European formula is unsafe, there are risks involved with it, it could, could harm your child, it might be dangerous. Are you kidding me? This, this is supposed to, this type of behavior is supposed to give us confidence in, in the FDA. This is beyond corruption. It's beyond corruption. And then we get to the financial conflicts of interest that explain a lot of why what's happening is happening. It's always about the money. Follow the money. Now, I like Bambi, and I think you will too. Have you ever had an issue with employee attendance? Have you ever had an employee altercation in your workplace? Have you ever been confused on how exactly to handle a situation with an employee? Have you ever had employee performance issues? Have you ever stressed about navigating through HR compliance, the nightmare? Now, the bad news is that one complaint against your company can turn your whole world upside down. The good news is Bambi is here to help small business owners implement good HR practices. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses just like yours. So you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR Autopilot automates your core policies. We're talking workplace training and employee feedback. Then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the most complex parts of HR and guide you to compliance. They're available by phone, by email, or real-time chat. Now, an in-house HR manager, that could cost you up to $80,000 a year. But with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. No hidden fees. You can cancel anytime. You run your business, let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com slash Liz right now for your free HR audit. It's spelled B-A-M-B-E-E -E dot com slash Liz. Bambi.com slash Liz. Okay, so now let's talk financial conflicts of interest because when you follow that money trail, it really tells you everything you need to know about why what's happening is actually happening. So going back to the European formula for a second, remember that the labeling, on the European brands of formula is the reason that it doesn't meet FDA standards. It's not the ingredients. It's not that there's some unsafe practice associated with it either being manufactured or distributed. It, um, it's not that at all. In fact, as, as I noted before, U.S. formula ingredients are garbage compared to what's in European formula. Vegetable oil, at least European formula, tries to mimic breast milk, which they acknowledge is the healthiest option for babies. So 
The New York Times, I want to read you this piece from the New York Times because it illustrates the point that I'm going to make better than, better than an explanation. This is what the New York Times writes. Quote, to find out just how different European formulas are from U.S. versions and to see whether they meet FDA guidelines, Anthony Porto, a pediatric gastroenterologist and pediatrics professor at Yale University, led a study to analyze European formulas. The study's authors concluded there are safety concerns that arise from importing these formulas. For one, the instructions for some European formulas are written in Dutch or German, making it tough for English-speaking parents to prepare the formulas properly. European formulas are mixed differently than U.S. formulas. One scoop for one, for one ounce of water instead of the U.S. standard of one scoop per two ounces of water. This could cause a parent to inadvertently dilute their baby's formula. So, they think you're stupid, is what this, this doctor is saying. They, they think you can't figure this out. Okay, um, of course, the government should be the answer here. The government should be the one to tell you, oh, you're not allowed to try to do something. Because, well, you might mess it up. Also, New York Times writes, Porto noted it's impossible to know whether European formulas were transported under safe temperature conditions. The FDA does not inspect imported formula for safety and European formula shipments may be detained if detected because they don't meet FDA requirements. It would also be difficult to find out whether the formulas were subject to recall in the EU. The dietary guidelines for Americans issued by the Department of Agriculture take a firm stance Homemade infant formulas and those that are improperly and illegally imported into the United States without mandated FDA review and supervision should not be used. Now, remember, they're, they're holding up FDA review and supervision as this gold standard. But truly, here in the United States, is the FDA review, is there supervision of the, the production, the manufacturing, the distribution, and the sale of baby formula? Is it a gold standard? Are they actually keeping babies safe? I don't think they are. And neither, neither, neither do these people. So... Porto's team, the New York Times writes, did find that European formulas generally meet most of the FDA nutritional guidelines, even if the foreign formulas are not FDA approved. The opposite is not also is not always the case. The European Commission does, does have additional regulations on formula that the FDA does not, said Bridget Young, a professor of pediatrics at the University of Rochester School of Medicine and Dentistry. Okay, so we've established the fact that European formulas are, are better, right? And that um, that the FDA or pediatricians, as you can read, I mean, they're, they're quoting pediatricians, don't want you to use European formula, even though objectively, European formula is better for babies than U.S. than U.S. formula. So why is that? You, you would think, especially in a time, especially in a time of crisis where there's a shortage of formula, you would think that the, the lobbying arm of, well, pediatricians, you would think that they would be advocating for not only access to formula, but formula that's, that's better for babies than U.S. formula is. Well, of course, the governing arm of pediatricians. Who is that? That's the American Academy of Pediatrics. The American Academy of Pediatrics, if we just bring up their website, bring up their website right here, this is what their current partners page says. American Academy of Pediatrics partners with companies and organizations whose support helps advance our mission for children. A partnership does not imply endorsement of an organization's policies, products, or services, and only begins after carefully reviewing factors such as corporate citizenship, shared values, and policy alignment. That line actually is funny to me because it doesn't imply endorsement, but it's only possible if, if they share values and policy alignment. So it is an endorsement then, right? Of course it is. The following companies, foundations, and organizations represent the top 10 donors to the AAP since January of 2018. Remember, these donors are partners. The partners share values and policy alignment. The JPB Foundation, Reckitt Mead Johnson, that is one of the formula companies, that is part of the monopoly. Melissa and Doug, Abbott Nutrition, company number two in this baby formula monopoly. Conrad Hilton Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, Nestle Nutrition. Aha, and that completes the trifecta. Nestle Nutrition, that's owned by Gerber. That is all three of the biggest formula companies that have a monopoly over the industry and our country are partnered with the AAP. So here we have pediatricians who have to follow AAP standards or else they're liable for lawsuits, um, advocating that parents in our country only use U.S. formula and don't import formula from Europe. And suddenly we just have this giant, glaring financial conflict of interest. How are you supposed to trust your pediatrician when your pediatrician is legally obligated to follow the guidelines set by the AAP? And how are you supposed to trust the AAP guidelines when they're, when they're partnered, their biggest donors are these formula companies who they are then recommending to you as the parent to use for your baby? You can't. That's not unbiased. It, it's, it's rife with hideous bias, with, do with hideous dollar signs. 
suddenly it's no wonder that these different, these different pediatricians are telling you that European formula might be dangerous. Dr. Stephen Abrams, the New York Times, says chair of the Committee on Nutrition at the American Academy of Pediatrics and director of the Dell Pediatric Research Institute in Austin, Texas, said he would strongly discourage, discourage parents from using formulas that aren't regulated by the FDA. And then we have, we have Dr. Dina DiMaggio. Parents should turn to their pediatricians to find out what's the best formula. We're finding that's not the case. A lot of pediatricians don't know that parents are using European formula. Well, your pediatricians have been corrupted by the AAP, who's corrupted by their financial partnership. The fact that their biggest donors are these formula companies. Then we have, then we have the FDA, which is part of the federal government. They're an administrative agency in the executive branch of our government. And they're also financially tied. They are financially influenced by the formula lobby, by the lobbyists for the formula industry. The New York Times published an article on July 8th of 2018, and this is what it said. A resolution to encourage breastfeeding was expected to be approved quickly and easily by the hundreds of government delegates who gathered this spring in Geneva for the United Nations affiliated World Health Assembly. Based on decades of research, the resolution said that mother's milk is healthiest for children and countries should strive to limit the inaccurate or misleading marketing of breast milk, breast milk substitutes. Then the United States delegation, embracing the interests of the infant formula manufacturers, upended the deliberations. The Americans were blunt. If Ecuador refused to drop the resolution, Washington would unleash publish, punishing trade measures and withdraw crucial military aid. The Ecuadorian government quickly acquiesced. The showdown over the issue was recounted by more than a dozen participants from several countries, many of whom requested anonymity because they feared retaliation from the United States. Lobbyists from the baby food industry attended the meetings in Geneva. By the way, think, think, think of, zoom out for a second. Study after study after study all around the world has shown that the rates of infant mortality, meaning the likelihood that your baby will die, are lower if you breastfeed your child. If you give your child formula, the, the rate of infant mortality increases. That's simply, that, this, is not, this is not intended to shame. This is, this, is, this is purely clinical. This is just statistics. And so a government, if they're getting involved in, in this, they have to do so in the interest of, of their people. Their people include babies. Babies are citizens of this country. So in the interest of their babies, governments, if they're going to put their finger in this industry, they must advocate for breastfeeding. They can't advocate for something that causes, causes more danger to, to the, these little ones, to the most vulnerable among us. And yet, that's exactly what happened, what the United States delegation of the federal government fell prey to because of the lobbyists in the infant formula industry. So we have then this regulatory prism through which the FDA controls the entire industry. We have not a free market system. We have a monopoly. We have this, this, this very high barrier to entry. It's almost impossible to meet. And yet the FDA, in their regulatory capacity, makes it very easy to stay, even if that means sacrificing the quality of the product or the safety by, by neglecting their inspections, as happened in the Sturgis plant in Michigan at Abbott Nutrition. We have this government program, this WIC program that skews the market incredibly, where these, these these, these contract monopolies are awarded in to just one formula manufacturer in each state. Half of baby formula is sold through to WIC. WIC is the purchaser of half of baby formula in the United States. This also skews the market even further because it, it, it causes these manufacturers to raise the price of the formula that's not been purchased on WIC to compensate for the bulk discounts that they give the government. It also, individual individual stores, when they stock their product, they, they have no incentive to offer any other product, any other brand aside from the WIC brand, the WIC contracted brand, because why would you stock something that you know that 50% of your customers can't buy? Then we have the FDA who claims, you know, they're here about safety. They say that you can't buy European formula because it, it might be unsafe. It might be dangerous. Who knows? It might be. They've neglected their job. Then we have these financial conflict of interests where the AAP sets the standards for pediatricians. Pediatricians are repeating to moms not to use European formula, only to use U.S. formula. And yet the AAP is corrupted by con financial conflicts of interest. These financial conflicts of interest are literally donors to the AAP, these, these big formula companies. And then we even have the federal government 
the executive branch of the federal government, the executive branch, which runs the FDA, compromised by the infant formula lobby. This, this is a scandal of enormous proportions. This is a scandal of enormous proportions. And it, it, it shows, by the way, that once again, the left in our nation is in bed with big business. They claim that the right is, but the left time and time again is in bed with big business. I want to talk about that more in just a second. But we, all, we also have to understand, ba- based on looking below the surface, based on looking at the, the part of the iceberg that's under the water, not just the tip that we see being reported inaccurately or misrepresented by Pete Buttigieg, by mainstream media, we, we, we can see how to fix this crisis. We can fix it by simply a, a logistical fix. In fact, There's a lot of baby formula that is in stock in the United States. It's just not in the right spots. It's not in the right locations. And so we need a a logistical, a logistical plan to transport the formula from where it is to where it needs to be. That's number one. Number two is we need to approve European formula for sale in the United States. I understand America first. I understand wanting to manufacture here in our country and wanting to use products that were created here. But what we have right now in the United States, we don't have a free market system. We don't have a competitive capitalist system where the products being offered to moms are the best products. We have a government that's engaging in crony capitalism that's disallowing the market to improve the products. And so until we fix that, we need to allow moms access to higher quality formula, which is the European brands. We also need to address the WIC program, the problems with the WIC program, the the way it warps the markets. And by the way, Congress can do this. Congress can fix the WIC program because Congress created the WIC program um, and let the market be the market. Congress, listen to what I'm saying. We can also use existing antitrust laws to break up the monopoly if there is law breaking that is happening. We have antitrust laws against monopoly on the books for a reason. They should be used if it applies. Um, The FDA also needs to address these issues of entry, these, these incredibly impossibly high barriers of entry into the market and the corruption at the FDA that allows them or enables them, empowers them to be negligent in their role of overseeing this this industry. If they're not going to exercise their role, then maybe they shouldn't, maybe they shouldn't be in that role at all. Maybe the FDA's time has come and gone. Maybe the FDA should be relegated to just history and they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. They shouldn't be allowed to engage in the corruption that they're engaging um, with at all. So like I said, these things, by the way, could solve very quickly the problems that we're seeing in the baby formula industry, because it's not, as Mayor, as Secretary Pete said, this is not one company and, and, and one plant. This, if we don't fix this, this will happen again. If this is the problem with crony capitalism, this is the problem when you allow the left to be in bed with big business. I mean, we saw it happen with Boeing. We saw it happen with Disney. We saw it happen with Pfizer. Now we're seeing it happen with, you know, Abbott Nutrition, And these are just the examples, by the way, that come to mind from the last two, three, four months. These big businesses are harming Americans for profit. They're actively hurting people in our country just to make dollars. And the left is endorsing this. The left is complicit in this. The left is allowing this and deflecting when we demand accountability. And that's what you and I should do today. I always hope that you share my episodes because, you know, this is what I do for a living and I want as many people to hear what I say as possible. But this episode specifically, share this. Even if you don't usually share political related materials, share this so that moms know, so that dads know, so that voters, parents and voters know that what's happening now with the baby formula, the crisis, the shortage, the anxiety, the almost the paranoia of how am I going to feed my child? Is my baby going to have the formula that he or she needs? That this is due to politicians. This is not something that just arbitrarily happened. This is a result of deliberate political decisions made by politicians who don't care about you. They care about their financial partnerships with these big companies who profit off of hurting you. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for listening. I'm Liz Wheeler. This is The Liz Wheeler Show. The Liz Wheeler Show is produced by Jonathan Hay. Executive producer, Chad Abbott. Director of photography, Kevin McRoberts. Editor, Alejandro Figuerilla. Sound mixer, Robin Fenderson. Director of marketing, Emily Washler. Production and talent coordinator, Matt Toffler. And senior publicist, Patricia Jackson. This has been a Soundfront production. If 
you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below, and ring the bell to make sure you never miss a video.